Oh there. And now get ready for a tassic. That's right, a tassic. That being American Werewolf in London. Now we all know American Werewolf in London. And what else can I say? It's a tassic. Directed by the man himself, Don Landis. Now as we all know, Don Landis had the big fame in the early 80s. That being, as we all know, the Blue Buffers. Now, as you already and already know, I fucking hate remakes. I don't want to despise remakes. But in all fair said and done, this is a remake of a 19... I think it was 1931, I'll be right or 1932. You know, the classic Universal monster films, Werewolves, Dracula, Frankenstein, and all that. And it's one of them. It's a classic werewolf film. And this is a remake. Now, at the time, at the time, you could say werewolf films were dying out. They didn't make a lot of werewolf films as it went into the 70s. You know, they didn't make a lot. Bear with me. Sorry about that. See, my dog getting inside of an American werewolf in London. Shut up. Right? So, yeah, they didn't make a lot of werewolf films at that time. And the late 70s, the werewolves were dying out. The last werewolf film, believe it or not, was done by, I'm not making this up, but I'm not of you there, was done by dogs. That's right. They were done by fucking dogs. Dressed up as fucking werewolves. I know it sounds comical, but they were. They were actually done by blooding dogs. So, at the time, Don Landis wanted to make a comedy, wanted to make a love story, a dad city, and an horror film, all rolled into one, but with a new touch to it. A new touch. Now, at the time, they were already doing another werewolf film, that being The Owling. So, you could say, technically, that 1981. And you could say, I mean, the werewolf films have been bidding in 1981, you know what I mean? You had one gold, I remember, and right, they go raw. And then you had the owling, and then you had this. And you even had the diet, the, the, the effects. That being Rick Baker. And then, all fair said and done, in 1982, Rick Baker rightly won the award to the, Amer the American werewolf in London. And the rest is history. The rest is history. So, yeah, you've got a good story. It's a good love story, and it's a dark, sad story. Because when you think about it, it is. You know, it starts off where you've got two young lads who come from America, and they go to another area. It's this night, you know, up in the moors, who knows the story, and they basically go to this pub, and basically the barman's being a knob. It always tights me in this film, right? It strikes me because one of the lads makes a mistake. He says, what's that star on the pens are in? And they look at him and basically they fuck him off. They don't go away. And the guy goes on to, to stay on the road. As we know, that's their mistake. They don't stay on the road. But let's not forget the damn good practical effects. Let's not forget the damn good practical effects. Because... In the film, right, you know, running across the moors, and as we all know, it break up. Was going to do the effects for the owling, but then he had to do the effects for American Werewolf in London instead. He also, as we all know, did the effects for Star Wars. You know, the scene in the bar scene. So I love to see, I love to see where his mate falls on the floor. Now I've got to be honest. I've got to be honest. Um, when I first saw this film, when I was a kid, it stared the shit out of me. It really stared the shit out of me. But American Werewolf in London, all, fed, all fair said and done, is a definitely done film. It's a definitely done film. There's a lot of other elements to it. You know, there's the nightmare in a nightmare. Now, for anyone who wants to know what the nightmare in the nightmare is, there's a scene where the David Tallet character, the one who survives after his mate's been ripped to pieces by the werewolf. He has a nightmare, right? And all his family's been killed by these weird monster things. Really frightening scene. Wakes up, there's a nursery fancies. She gets fucking stabbed to pieces and gets killed in front of him. And as we all know, that was another nightmare. And I always wondered whether 
that was the first time they ever did that where they did a nightmare in a nightmare scene because I know they've done it in a lot of other horror films over the days but let's not forget the damn good practical effects damn good practical effects you will never see ever again in a werewolf film and that's to see me David Carator, the character turns into the werewolf he literally turns into the werewolf all done practical the lot now I do know that the actor didn't like the fact they had a lie on the floor and they had to put fake fur on him and all this and he was butt naked and he was moaning he was looking at him moaning and one of the women who was doing the effects had a go at him she actually said I don't know what you're moaning at when we did the elephant man the actor didn't moan over over the makeup and he had to walk around with a big doll of bed on him all the way through the film you know what I mean so yeah you know what I mean he, he at least thought about that, but I like it. It's new elements to the werewolf film. The effects are brilliant. And as we all know in the film, American Werewolf in London, there's a scene where he sees his mate as a ghost, and all the way through the film, he's rotting away, he's got rotten skin, the lot. Again, damn good makeup effects. Damn good makeup effects. So I think in 1981, this was the era when the werewolf films was becoming modern. and most fair said and done, Don Landis made a good one. American Werewolf in London is a good one. There's some comedy in it and a bit of British humour. The scene where he's running around naked, David Tessa turn, you've got a little lad, he walks through the mum and he says, A naked American man stole my brooms. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's funny. And I also love the song, you know, Blue Moon, what definitely goes for the film. Definitely goes for the film. And it definitely has a sad ending because all the way through the film he discovers that he's a werewolf. He's been killing people in London, doesn't fuck around on the blood and door. And there's a scene where he's in a set cinema, you know what I mean, when he's watching a bit of an exciting film. And um, yeah, there's a good scene in it where he turns to the werewolf. Again, good practical effects, you will never see ever again. Very heartbreaking. Done today, shitty CDR. And this is a bit where I'm going to have a rings and I'm going to have a moan. Because Rip Breaker wanted to say that one day if he ever redid this film, he'd want to do it by shitty, shitty, ah. Rip Breaker. Rip Breaker, mate. Don't do it. Don't do it. I do know he did a remake called The Wolfman. You know, the classic Universal Monster film, The Wolfman. And all I can say is the effects are darbids. The fucking darbids. Because you cannot beat practical effects when it comes to tacits like the company of wolves when it comes to tacits like the owling the scene where the guy turns into a werewolf and his face stretches out and he's smiling and the scene in this American Werewolf in London where the face stretches out the makeup the everything the puppets there you cannot beat that you cannot beat that and I love it I fucking love it but I also remember the ending the ending always got me though it always got me because the shoot David Carter's character, the shooting by right? but I was thinking, why is it they're not using silver bullets? Correct me if I'm right and wrong. If you ever watched American Werewolf in London, right? And they've got an army and they've got bullets and they're about to shoot David Carter's character, you will notice if you watch it, there's no silver bullets. No silver bullets. And even the actor that played the character David Carter said that to, to John Landis. He said so, uh, don't they be silver bullets? But at the time, Don Tarp, Don Tarp, uh, Don Landis said, we're not making a sequel, we're not making a sequel. That's all he said, and I thought, why not? <laughs> but that is, it's understandable. But um, even though over the years, late 90s, they did kind of made a, a sequel, that being American Werewolf in Paris, which all said and done, don't bother. Don't bother with it because all it is is CDR. It's still going up to Darbids. Right? It's Darbids. So, as the film goes on, in a way, right, he gets shot up, David Carter, and it's pretty sad. He gets shot and he dies in front of a nurse who he fell in love with. Not a bit of bonking halfway for the film. But there's a nurse who he fell in love with. Beautiful woman in a day, been in a lot of films. You ever remember Loden's one? She was in that. She was in the 70s, The Way Away Kids. Been a lot of films. 
And it's sad because that's what I mean, it's a lost story. He fell in love with this nurse. They fell in love. There's a bit of a bonking scene. And he gets shot and dies. And it's sad. The only thing what fucking pisses me off though, and I've got to be honest, is he's dead, right? Really sad. He's crying her eyes out. And what do you get? You get ba 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 me You shall be very alone And you get a brilliant song like that It's like what the? What the? Instead of just having silent music And the music going up You get ba 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 That you know, the song from Blue Moon And it's like It's kind of ruining the mood of it being a really sad ending You know what I mean? It really does but Apart from being nitpicky, I don't mind the film. Because this was the film, you know, said and done, what got me into, what can I say? It got me into practical special effects. It got me into practical special effects, which all said and done, you're never going to see again. You are never going to see practical special effects like that ever again. And it's bloody heartbreaking. It didn't piss about on the blood in door. Then it was at 18. It's rememberable for a lot of reasons. And the fact that they're going to do a remake of it, don't, just do not do it. I've even heard rumours, right, that Donald fucking Landis' son is going on and doing it. I'm just hoping he's had a change of art. Don't do it. Don't remake a classic like American Werewolf in London. Now, Tanted, this was a remake to begin with from a 30s universal monster film but in all fair said and done this was a damn dud one this was a damn dud worthy remake it had practical effects and in my eyes it changed the look of werewolf films what can i say it changed the look of the werewolf film i do like the love letter at the end where it says happy reading to prince charles and die which is the idea how old the film is now it was a bit it, classic werewolf film from 1981, that being American Werewolf in London. And again, if anyone wants anything for me to review, talk about, movies, programs, don't be afraid. But until then, I'll see you soon. See you later.